Okay, welcome to the meeting of policy committee. Uh, here we are in committee room four because the council chamber is currently out of action, but still webcast, albeit in a different sort of way and recorded uh, as these things are. Item two, declarations of interest. Do we have any? No. Uh, item three, minutes of the previous meeting. Anything on those? Then we can agree that I'll sign them as a correct record. Excellent, done. Uh, on to petitions and questions. One petition followed by one councillor question. Our petition has been submitted, but I think Mr Lee is unable to attend. So we have Sam Joe presenting on, on um, uh, Mr Lee's behalf. So over to you, and I think you have up to five minutes, if I recall correctly. Yeah, so basically, I'm Sammy Joe Namini. I'm a tenant of Homes for Reading. Uh, and I'm put here on behalf of 101 families, which I think is a little bit less now because some have already moved out. Um, and I just wanted to draw to your attention that the pressing matter at hand has reflected to 100, 1,121 signatures on the petition, which we have collected. Um, and this is vital that we address the urgent concerns regarding the lack of suitable accommodation and the cost of private rentals and the broken promises that we have been left with and in a state of distress. Um, the council shortage of available housing options and the soaring prices of rentals have created an unbearable burden for many families already. Um, and we are deeply rooted in our homes, jobs, schools, communities, health teams, making any disruption to our living arrangements not only financial, financially like bad but emotionally devastating as well. Our children's well-being, education and sense of stability are also at stake here. Um, where are we? The financial strain associated with furniture storage as well as removals have added to this overwhelming challenges. Many of us have invested our time resources into improving our homes, creating safe and comfortable environments for our loved ones and families. However, the promise that we could remain in our homes for as long as we needed or wanted has now been shattered. We have relied on assurance to shape our lives and the sudden change of circumstances have left us feeling betrayed and uncertain about our futures. Yet, we have caught wind of potential alternative source that could potentially be brought to light. We implored you to reconsider your decision and explore all alternative avenues. By doing so, you have the power to provide us with lifeline, which we so desperately need, sparing us from further upheaval and uncertainty. We have appealed to your compassion and empathy, asking you to reconsider the profound impact that the situation is having on us as families, particularly the children, we are not just numbers or individuals. We are parents, siblings, guardians, and trying to create a stable and nutrient environment for our loved ones. The mental health consequences are uprooting our lives and the distress caused by broken promises are not great. In closing, I implore you to open your hearts to our plea and carefully consider the gravity of the situation, the well-being and future of families, hang in the balance and the, we believe that your understanding and support we can find a resolution that upholds the principles and compassion fairness and community and we should have to we shouldn't have to suffer or be held accountable for the council's mishandling of debts and that is pretty much it thanks for hearing us out Thank you very much. We've received the petition via committee services uh, to the monitoring officer and I will ask Councillor Emerson to respond. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for coming along tonight um, and for your constructive engagement throughout on the difficult issue um, for all Homes for Reading tenants. As you'll be aware, the Council arrived last year at the provisional view that the appropriate course of action embarked on with regret and an acknowledgement of the impact on homes for Reading tenants is to wind down in an orderly way the activities of the company. As set out in our consultation documents, the council reached this view after careful consideration of the company's finances, 
the risk to the council's finances if no action was taken and an independent analysis of the options with regards to homes for Reading carried out by a highly regarded independent consultancy Savills. The consultation made it clear that our preferred option of those available is for the company to cease trading. Our intention, as you state in the petition, is to transfer the properties into the housing revenue account, the HRA, so that they can be used to accommodate key workers through the housing allocations policy. The consultation closed on the 31st of March and the council will make a decision shortly. If the decision is to wind up homes for Reading, our housing options team will engage proactively with everyone affected to assist them in finding alternative housing. There are currently around 90 tenants in these properties. The number you've referred to, i.e. 400, is an estimate of the total people impacted in these households, including children. You do not refer in the petition to the fact that Homes Reading has been funded by loans from the council and that the company is not currently able to pay these loans back within a reasonable time. It is these financial considerations that have led us to the current situation rather than rent levels which are in place. Based on consideration of those rent levels alone, it would, as you suggest, not be logical course of action to move to a position where less rent can be collected against these assets. The wider position is, however, that the revenue from these properties is not sufficient for Homes for Reading to adequately service its debt to the council. The transfer of the properties into HRA will locate them in a different financial environment where charging sub-market rents can be sustained as part of the wider budget arrangements for the HRA. It is not in the council's interest to bolster the housing register. This, however, is the mechanism by which all social housing must be fairly and lawfully allocated. We fully acknowledge the impact of the possible decision on current tenants. As stated above, we will be working intensively with all households towards other housing options, and it is not our intention to formally evict anyone if this can be avoided. It is, of course, regrettable that the original vision for Homes for Reading of offering long-term stable homes is, in our view, no longer viable for the long term. We are committed to helping all tenants find suitable alternative homes if the decision to end their current tenancies is taken. And our thanks go to the many tenants who have participated in the consultation, including those who attended the free recent online meetings where tenants' views were shared. Once a decision has been taken, we will contact all tenants individually to notify <coughs> them of the position and subject to the decision, begin our engagement with them about the most appropriate next steps for each household based on a thorough assessment of their needs and circumstances. Thank you, Councillor Emerson. Thank you again for the petition, which has been logged and, you know, therefore form part of the decision making process and there'll be further communication in due course. But thank you for coming this evening to present as well. That's OK. Thank you. And we move on then to councillor questions uh, because we have no public questions this evening. We have one councillor question, which is from Councillor White to the lead councillor for climate strategy and transport. Councillor White. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is, uh, will the Council sign up to the Fossil Fuel Treaty? In light of RBC's climate emergency declaration in February 2019 and the current Reading Climate Emergency Strategy, Global Justice Now, Friends of the Earth and many other national groups are lobbying councils for their endorsement of the Fossil Fuel Non-Proliferation Treaty. This treaty, also known as the Fossil Fuel Treaty, was initiated by small island states facing disastrous sea level rises. It has been endorsed by UK councils, including those of Birmingham, Brighton and Hove, Cambridge, Hastings and Lambeth. Global Justice say that the, the support of local councils around the world is effective in persuading national governments to join the treaty. The treaty's three pillars are non-proliferation, <coughs> to prevent new coal, oil and gas development, an equitable phase out of existing fossil fuel extraction, a just transition so that no community, country or worker is left behind. Is Reading Council prepared to endorse this treaty? Councillor Ellis. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor White, for your question. Uh, the aims of the fossil fuel non-proliferation uh, treaty are wholly consistent with the Council's February 2019 Climate Emergency Declaration and the Reading Climate Emergency Strategy, which the Council endorsed in November 2020. Reading Borough Council, as you know, has a long tradition and strong track record of action on climate change. 
being a founding member of the Reading Climate Change Partnership in 2008 and playing a full role in the development and implementation of successive Reading climate change strategies since that time. Our efforts with partners have contributed to Reading's carbon emissions being cut by 51% since 2005, the eighth largest reduction out of 374 UK local authority areas. Our corporate emissions have also been cut by 74% since 2008-9, and we were pleased last year to meet our target to reduce our own consumption of fossil fuels by 50% two years ahead of schedule. We know there is much more to do, but these achievements provide a solid foundation on which to build. Reading is also proud of its diversity and many of the communities who live in Reading have strong links with the regions and the nations of the world, which are even more exposed to the impacts of a changing climate than we are in the UK. For this and the other reasons given, Reading Borough Council is happy to express its solidarity with those who have pioneered the treaty and will be happy to endorse the treaty, adding its voice to the call for an end to new coal, oil and gas extraction, an equitable phase out of fossil fuel production and a just transition to a sustainable future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ennis. Councillor White, do you have a supplementary? No? Okay, uh, then we move on to the only substantive item on our agenda, which is unusually part two because of uh, restricted information relating to individuals. So I need to move the exclusion of the press and public as printed on item five. Can we agree to that? Agreed. 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 Wonderful. In which case I, I have to ask anybody who's having the press to leave the room and at least stop the recording. <coughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.